Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech going over the top 10 cards from Journey into Nyx. This set is coming out in two weeks, so please remember that this was done before anybody got a chance to play these cards. If you disagree with me, please feel free to post an alternative list in the comments. I will approve those, and I would love to see what other people's ideas are around this set. Honorable mentions here have been a little bit tough. This is not the deepest set. I've got Godsend on here, which is making other people's top 10 lists, because it's a solid card, but it is not a broken card. I do not think it will see Legacy play. I do not think that it's better than the Swords. It is a good card with really cool artwork on it. I look forward to seeing it in foil. Uh, the gods, any of the gods that didn't make the top 10 to list are also honorable mentions to me just because they are popular EDH casual cards. The artwork is just incredible on them, even if they're not the most competitive. In the number 10 spot here, I have Aegis of the Gods. It gives you hex proof. Now, I want this to be an amazing card in Legacy. The problem is that Toxic Deluge and Golgari Charm are both very, very popular currently as ways to get rid of true name nemesis. And as long as these two cards are really popular, this is a limited sideboard card that really kind of draws some hate or works as another nice card that you can put in against a storm deck. Uh, but it's not the powerhouse that it could be. If it was a 2-2, it would have a much better chance than it currently has to make an impact in Legacy. I like the card. Two damage does matter. It's a solid hate bear that I'm going to definitely pick up a set of for my Death and Taxes deck. In the number nine spot here, I've got another card that is a very solid hate card. They've basically taken one of my favorite burn hate cards out there and added it onto a body. Now, the body makes it a little bit more fragile, but that body can attack, and this is a significant body. A 2-2 two -two is a very solid body when you're attacking. I'm very happy with this card. Almost any card that's going to get rid of it is going to cost your opponent 3 damage. You're going to often have this guy around for a turn or two. I also really look forward to seeing it in foil. I think the title for this set should really be called Journey into Hate Bears. Hate Bears are really where this set is at. I'm actually surprised that Spirit of the Labyrinth wasn't moved into this set. Uh, the only one that didn't make the top 10 for me is the New Rule of Law Hate Bear. It's a little more expensive. I don't think that it's going to have the impact that the other Hate Bears could potentially have. The number 8 spot here, I've got the Temples. I'm not really a fan of the Temples, but they are much, much better than the Guild Gates, and they're going to see a lot of play. I would trade for them early. They'll be solid throughout the standard season, although they'll be worth nothing after they rotate out. In the number seven spot here, we've got a Johnny. This is the Selesnia Planeswalker we've all been looking for. Very, very solid Planeswalker. The three plus one plus one counters uh, can do a lot of damage. The plus one allows you card advantage. The minus eight is basically a win in 90% of the situations. This is a good Planeswalker. The only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't really have a good way to defend itself. And for a five drop, that's really an oversight. So I like him. He's going to be a fun casual card and a solid card in a green-white deck as the top of the curve for an aggro deck. Dictate of Erebos. This is a great casual card. Very cool artwork. It's really a grave pack with flash. It's easier to cast because you've only got two black instead of three black, so it splashes better, and it doesn't give your opponent the warning that they're expecting. Now, I wouldn't pick these up right away. They'll drop way down in price, but long term, this is going to be a popular EDH card. I love it. Number five spot here, I've got the Boros God. He can definitely be the top of a very aggressive Boros deck, allowing you to get through your last few points of damage against a monster's deck or another deck that has tried to really clog up the board. Number four spot here, I really struggled over this one, Master of Feasts. I hate giving my opponents cards. I love Hypnotic Spectre. 
and this is an incredible flyer that rips cards from your opponent's hand. Master of Feasts is really on the opposite side. It's a Tomb Stalker-like effect, that 5-5 five, five flyer, but it gives your opponent a card every single turn. Uh, I'm worried about this. I don't know if it actually has any potential in Legacy because you're giving your opponent such amazing cards. In a Devotion Standard deck, though, it could be very strong. If they don't have a lot of answers, a 5-5 five, five Flyer is a super fast clock. I have definitely died to Tomb Stalker before. I can see this in Standard, where the removal isn't great as being a solid card. It's a reason to think about playing Abrupt Decay as removal in your deck. Number three spot here, I've got Banishing Light. It's really the new Oblivion Ring. This card is powerful. It has the new wording template on it, so it gets rid of some of the problems of uh, uh, blinking or removing an Oblivion Ring while the trigger is on the stack. It allows the blue-white control decks to play eight of these Detention Sphere Oblivion Ring type effects in Standard, and it allows the mono white decks to have an extremely good removal in their main deck. I really, really like this card. It is going to be impactful in Standard and a solid card in Modern. Number two spot here, I've got Prophetic Flame Speaker. A lot of debate over this card. People either love it or they hate it. Now, emotionally, I'm super attached to Ophidian. I've played a lot of Ophidians. Classic control card advantage is one of my favorite things. I also have played a few Dragon Tyrants in EDH and love Trample Double Strike. This card merges those two into a massive card advantage engine that can do lots of damage. Think Gore Clan Rampager, hitting your opponent for 10, or if they blocked, killing their creature and probably hitting them for 5 or 6, getting two extra cards. This is the type of card that you can put down and then start to crush your opponent with the card advantage and a real threat. I like this card. The fact that it's a three caster at the mythic level puts it really high up on my list. Mana Confluence is an incredible looking card. It is a very solid card in eternal formats and it's going to smooth out mana in standard. The super aggressive decks are going to look to play this over the guild gates to smooth, the, smooth out their mana and kill their opponents a turn or two faster on average. I love this card in standard. People need to remember that City of Brass was a very expensive card for a lot of magic. It has been reprinted seven times and it's still a five dollar card. With a single printing, this could be an extremely valuable card until it sees a reprint. In several situations, it is better than City of Brass. Now, there are some situations where City of Brass is better. Let's look at those a little more in depth. Situations where your opponent can tap down your lands with something like Rishadon Port or Tangle Wire, this card is clearly better. So in Vintage and in Legacy, that extra damage matters a lot. I would definitely pick up a place out of these if you play the Eternal formats to replace your Cities of Brass. Now, the City of Brass activated ability does have some edge cases where it's actually better. A deck that plays Solitary Confinement is going to want a City of Brass so that you can prevent that damage. A deck that is trying to kill you with Burn may even want to consider using City of Brass because the triggered ability in this case goes on the stack and you're able to use that mana before you take the damage. So there's some edge cases where each one is better. I'm definitely a fan though of mana confluence in 99% of the cases, especially in older eternal formats. This also gives you the possibility to have 12 any color mana sources in those eternal decks. You can play City of Brass, you can play Mana Confluence, and you can also play Gemstone Mines. 
I'm not sure there's really a deck that needs that perfect mana at this point. Drew Levin has been arguing that a slower grindy dredge deck could use it. I don't really agree there. I think that a more aggressive, faster dredge deck is the way to go with dredge, given the current combo environment. It does open up this possibility for really broken decks to have two different sources of colored mana that just doesn't go away. I would watch out for this for future deck construction. The number one spot here, I've got the Black White God. I really like the effect on this. Normally I hate Punisher mechanics, but if you can put him in a really aggressive shell, then the Punisher mechanic isn't really an option for your opponent. There's lots of ways to turn this on, to turn it into massive card advantage. Cartel Aristocrat comes to mind, along with the Zenthrid Necromancer. This card works really, really well against cards like Supreme Verdict or other sweepers. Very solid card. I look forward to brewing with it in Standard and in Modern. This is where I'm putting my money. In the pre-order area, Mana Confluence, Prophetic Flame Speaker, I've already locked those in, and I'm waiting to find, and I'm waiting to find Eldion of the Great Revel in foil. All three of these cards have a lot of potential long-term. These are the ones that I recommend picking up. The other things on this top 10 list, I believe you can easily trade for in the next few weeks. They may even drop a little bit, but this is where the pre-order should be. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Also, please check out the Patreon chat. Also, please check out the Patreon page. It allows individuals to donate to the channel if you like the content. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate the support.